The Rebel Capitalist Show. The GFC housing prices peaked out, or prior to the GFC, housing prices peaked out around 2006. And they bottomed out around 2012. So it took six years. Uh, the housing market moves very, very slowly as far as uh, price decreases, usually. Uh, do you, if, if we go into this environment where home prices are actually going down, do you see that uh, as something that happens more quickly or something that's just very slow, kind of a gradual grind down? And uh, let's focus on nominal prices, and then maybe we'll talk about uh, prices adjusted for inflation. Yeah. Um, I, I really, I think as far as price decreasing goes, I think that's probably going to be a very slow event grind right. Right. um there might be like an initial like drop because like just like anything if it moves up too fast then it's going to have a drop that's too fast so i mean i could see like maybe an initial like kind of a drop but really ultimately i see like things stagnating more than actually like dropping yeah, right. and that's going to be just as discouraging to people as you know as prices going down you know in a in in a way um you know I, I don't, I just don't necessarily see like a huge housing crisis crash like we experienced during the great financial crisis. And the only reason why I'm saying that is because really like the homes that are being sold now, I feel like most of them are only going to the most qualified people. Like you really like with them being as expensive as they are and the credit availability, like as far as like who can actually get a loan out there from the available of loans that are out. Like I just think about it. So it's like, you've got a group of people who are looking to buy homes. Most of those people are just not going to even be available to get it. And only the most qualified people will actually acquire those homes. And, and also because of the what, price what of homes are being built. You know, it, it's, we, we've got to define that because mm -hmm. are the, is it these uh, three, 4,000 square foot homes or are they starter homes that are your typical 1500 square foot three bed two bath ranch because yeah. that, that, that's uh, another you know that it, it is there that's important right and it's and it's hard for me to observe that because i live in a very it's turning into a very rich area um you know a lot of people from the seattle portland california they sold their expensive homes they move up here to the pacific northwest and are able to buy a home for a third of the price of what they just sold theirs for yeah. and on the Oregon coast. Yeah. And I'm on the Oregon coast. And so my observation of what I see here is probably not very realistically compared to the rest of the country that's going on out there. Right. You know, if you build a home here and you're building a 1500 square foot ranch style home, you're probably building that for yourself to live in. If yeah, you're building you something sell it at a profit, you won't be able to sell it for a profit. That's exactly right. You won't be able to sell it for a profit. It is just, it, it, there wouldn't be enough in it to do it, you know, as far as, as far as the profitability. So, so the homes they get built here are very expensive, you know, they're high end, very high quality, you know, expensive homes. Cause you know, that's what's selling right here. That's what people are willing to buy. You know, if we had a different type of environment, if this wasn't like a retirement community or something like that, then I would probably have something different to say as far as what kind of construction I'm, I'm witnessing. But what I see right now from what I I'm looking at is my area is going through a lot of gentrification right now and i'm seeing it happen i mean the medical district is growing dramatically here the retirements are you know moving up like you see a lot of retirees moving here and i'm seeing like you know those working class style individuals with families they're they're not so they're not so prevalent like they once were here yeah, you know, got I mean, we have to go to the market right now. The price had it. Yeah, it's like really difficult to try and raise a family here. I mean, I I mean, if you go back through my videos, I mean, I just recently just like had to deal with just purchasing of a home. And man, it just about killed me. I mean, it took everything I could do to try and make this happen. And I think to myself, it was just like, holy moly, I have a YouTube channel. If you didn't have if I didn't have that, I wouldn't have done. It. I would have had to leave. So it makes me wonder. It's just like, how is it that somebody else is supposed to make it? Yeah, but if you know, you, I think that I'm you listen clearly, to Janet Yellen and Lael Brainerd and the Talking Heads, uh, inflation is a high class problem. Remember? 
<laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, because we don't notice it at all. Um, yeah. Yeah. But let, let's you go know, back to what you're saying because you're talking about the housing market. At, we'll kind of zoom out for a moment. Yeah, sure. You're talking about the overall housing market kind of flatlining or you're getting stagnant. And, you know, the first thing that I think of is what does that do to overall purchasing power when I believe this increase in purchasing power that we've seen or any increase in purchasing power is a result of asset bubbles. So that would either be the stock market or housing. It's definitely not a result of people producing more. Uh, but if it does kind of flatline and if inflation, consumer price inflation, let's define that, uh, continues to go up at maybe four, five, six percent as measured by the CPI, then the real value of the home is actually declining, uh, yeah. meaning that, you know, how much stuff you can buy with the equity in your home is going down. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, that is going to be a very painful scenario for a lot of people that are not expecting it. Like I know quite a few people who have flipped houses over the last few years, and yeah. I don't know what they would do if they didn't flip houses. Right. Like, like if you don't have that scenario in which that you can sell this house you for a you, profit, you don't, you don't know how they get their purchasing power. You don't know how, how they going to get the purchasing power not if they didn't have that extra side hustle. Right? That's it. That's exactly right. Like, I mean, you know, you can have your average job. Like, you know, I have my day job. My day job pays the bills. Like, I can I can pay all my bills with it, but there's nothing left. So, yeah. if there was anything that I wanted to do, if I wanted to go on vacation, if I want to buy a car, if I want anything in life, I have to find a side hustle to do it. Yeah. And that's where like YouTube came in for me because I was doing side hustles, but they'd only pull in a few hundred dollars a month. It's not enough yeah. to do anything. Yeah, with. but most you know, people's side hustle is their home equity or their 401k. That's, that's exactly right. So when they're, you know, when their home value goes up thirty thousand dollars over the last few years, they refinance and take the thirty thousand dollars and enjoy their life. And they do this on a regular basis, like every few years. And when you come accustomed to that, what are you going to do when you can't? Yeah, right. Or you know, I mean, direction. Exactly. Or it goes to the opposite direction where it's just like, yeah, now it's, it ends up costing you. So I what, honestly what you, feel that. Oh, go ahead. Go, what What are you seeing with uh, wages? And like, like what's happening at the lumber yard? Is there are any wage pressure? Are you guys seeing uh, labor shortages? Is it hard to get staff or just in the in the area with the restaurants? Or are you seeing any of that? Yeah. Um, so I know a few business owners who are having very difficult times keeping staff, and mainly is the restaurants. Right? Have they said um, why? Like well, why the people are, are quitting or not going back? Well, um, there's a lot of reasons for it. A lot of people are relocating, moving out of the area, right? Okay. It's an expensive area to live. Uh, right. So, you know, that's kind of taken place. There's also other job opportunities that are starting to come up where, you know, like, you could either serve or, you know, you can go and work for maybe a producer or something and, you know, a manufacturing and get paid a paid a better job. So there's kind of that kind of stuff going on. But mainly, like, from what I understand, it's the wages. And so, like, that's where what it comes down to. Like, a lot of these, from what I understand from a lot of these uh, restaurant owners are saying that, you know, the staff is asking or they're demanding a higher wage for it. And so when I asked them about this and I was just like, well is this something that you guys can actually pay out? And they're like, well, you already know that a restaurant really isn't profitable unless they are fully like yeah. every dining table is filled. E even then that's the when the margins are super thin. And even then they're super thin, right? So now they are restricted on having a full dining. They're pretty much got like takeout as their main source of just trying to stay operational. So, Paying the staff more, even though they're increasing the cost of food, isn't going to be something that's profitable to the to the restaurant. If it's not profitable to the restaurant, then you can't do it. So are they having to increase their prices or do they see further price increases in the future? Well, they are seeing further, further price increasing into the future if they can't get the staffing, right? Yeah. But like some of the some of the stuff is coming in is just like it's really like things that they wouldn't have anticipated, like to go containers. They can't get them. Like they just like simply can't get them. If you can't get a, then you can't operate. You can't sell the food. Right, right. So they had to shut down simply off a little styrofoam container that was unavailable. Well, let's be clear. It's the government restriction. Or yeah, you know what I mean. <laughs> starts with the you know, government. Whatever the cost Inter of interference. Is. I mean, it's like that's the situation that they're in. You know, 
I personally, when I'm looking out at there, like at some of the, like the job that I work at, luckily the, the company that I work for, he's a really good guy and he treats his employees really well. We are one of the few lumber yards in the entire country that still offers health, health insurance. So my boss is a really, really good dude. And the people who work for him really enjoy their job. So we don't have a high turnover and we don't have a lot of like opportunity to, to get into the company. You know, there's just like the people who are there like being there and they stick around. So I don't really see it in my personal business as much as like what I'm hearing from some of the other, from some of the other places out there. But I can tell you like from some of my friends, when they were getting stimulus checks, they quit their job and started working under the table and just rolling in money. Yeah. And so where are they? So where are they now? I mean, uh, now they're those little, stimulus yeah. uh, checks declined. And then another thing I'd ask you about the, the restaurant owners, I, I, I don't know if you've had this conversation with them, but I'd be curious to know if they got uh, PPP loans. Uh, I just mm -hmm. got a text from my sister yesterday and because I, I forgot on some video, I was talking about the increase in the M2 money supply. This conversation I had with Joseph Wang, it was a result of not only STEMI checks, but the PPP loans. And uh, I didn't realize how, to what degree, the PPP loans really affected the number. And my sister texts me and she says, pretty much every single business owner that she knows, she's in Dallas, uh, got a check for PPP. Um, yeah, I'm just about every business owner I know did too. Okay. Even like, even some of the grants to like some of the gig workers that I know, you, you know, they got a bunch of money as well. Um, and they didn't even have businesses or employees. You know? Yeah. I forgot about that. You know, they like a, a buddy of mine, he does a uh, computer tech work mm -hmm. and he was like in a really bad spot. And he was like, man, I don't know what I'm going to do, man. I haven't been, I haven't had any money or whatever. And I, invite him over for dinner just so he had something to eat and he goes man you wouldn't believe it i opened up the mailbox the other day and there was eight envelopes in there with a thousand dollars in each one of them from the irs and he goes and that happened a couple of times you know and he was talking about this money that started rolling in from all these grants and stuff that he had applied for as a gig worker mm -hmm. and he was shaking his head at it he goes man they gave me health insurance they gave me food stamps they gave me all this stuff he goes basically just took care of me for an entire year you know so what is he doing now? Is he continuing he to work for work or? He went back. To, I mean, you know, once people started feeling okay about having strangers in their homes again, because he goes into the homes and hooks up their computers and Wi-Fi's and, you know, does stuff like that. Oh, okay. So once that, like, you know, that stress of having a stranger in your home kind of, you know, kind of dropped away and yeah. businesses were allowing, you know, people to come in again. Then he started getting more work. So now he's like, he says, man, now sometimes it just feels like he's overwhelmed with work as people are trying to, you know, get things back up and running again. But yeah, for a year there, he was really nervous about it. But yeah, all of a sudden he's just like, man, it wasn't even expecting some of the stuff that came in. You know, he was just like, he signed up for these grants and just kind of forgot about them, thinking that never going to happen. 